Hello everyone. Today we have with us Greg Hapson. He is currently a double major at uh, Pomona. He is having a neuroscience major at Pomona, and he is also having a theatre major. So hi, Greg. Yeah. Hey, it's nice to see you again. And hello, you guys. My name is Greg. And yes. uh, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, we just have. Our last sets of midterms coming up, and we're getting ready for the end of the semester. So it's a busy time for us. Great. So let's have an interactive session. I'll put some questions for you. Uh, you know, you have been a, a student athlete for almost three years right now. So uh, you have some experiences of being a student athlete in a D3 school. So like. Uh, my first question to you is like, uh, why did you choose Pomona, uh, and uh, why such a small setting? You know, liberal, it's a liberal arts school, and the student body is pretty uh, small. Uh, it is a close knitted community. So why Pomona? Uh, there's just so many reasons to to talk about the program and just the school in general. Um, I think for me, the biggest one is kind of like, it's a school where it's small but it's large. And for someone who's indecisive like me, like it's nice having those options. Like you can stay really close with your friends at Pomona in just one school, or you can expand. You meet people out all over the five different Claremont colleges, such as Harvey Mudd and CMC and and Scripps. Like you have options. And when it comes to classes, I was really really excited about taking classes at these different schools, majoring at different schools, like trying out things at different schools and. The coolest part is like the dining hall and eating options. Like, you will never get tired of food. You just there's so many things and so many places to try. And yeah, when I was looking at other schools, like, cause I I I, I like liberal arts for that reason. Like, I wanted to do more than just neuroscience. I wanted to make a difference with what I do. Um, and I want to feel like I know more than just science. So I wanted to just learn how to be a better person and learn how to grow up and uh, with it, which is what a liberal arts school can offer. And Pomona, Pomona Pitzer was the best option for it. So like, uh, why a liberal arts school, first of all? Um, the main difference between a liberal arts school and a, like a normal, like, like a normal university would be the focus on taking different types of classes, like we have GE requirements that ask us to take some science classes, but some social justice classes. We have to take some English classes. We had to really like, like expand our, our breadth of knowledge. And because of that, like, because for me, it would have been so easy to go to like a, a normal UC school or like any of the Ivies or those kind of schools where you go there for that one thing you want to do and you stick with that one thing where a liberal arts school kind of forces you outside of the box and to think more than what you're just doing. They want you to see different angles. And I I felt like that was much more of a better investment in the future, and I wanted to be a part of that change. Okay. So, like, uh, how is it to be a student athlete in a Division three school? Um, it's nice. Um, I think one of the biggest things about D3 is that... Um, you're not signed to anything. You you just join the swim team and everything purely because you enjoy it. So it's not like D1 schools where you have like a national letter of intent and like you agree to swim for your four years. Like at D3, you can get recruited and you can be on the team for as long as you want. And during the season, like you're with people who just want to work hard and swim with you because you don't have to be there which is the coolest thing. Like everyone's there because they want to get better. They want to be faster. And especially someone with Mona Pitts there, like I've been swimming with guys who have amazing work ethics and have pushed me every day to be a better athlete. Okay, so like how do you manage your uh, athletics and academics together? Um, that's, a, it's, that's the whole beauty of D3 athletics and especially liberal arts like in a school like Pomona Pitzer, because they emphasize you're a student first. Um, we have classes. Uh, our coaches are totally understanding because half the time I come out, come to practice like 30 or 40 minutes late because I'm coming running out of the Keck laboratory 
and I'm just coming just like, oh, shoot, I'm late. I was in lab for like three hours and it lapped over swimming. And the coaches understand they let me swim a little later. And um, and that's what it's all about. Like our coaches know we're here to get an education first and they want to push us to be better athletes. They want to see us succeed at the highest levels. But there's so much time within the day to do to try other things as well. We don't have to just be a swimmer. We don't have to be just a academic. We could be both and we'd be more than both. I guess this is one of the biggest advantage of being a, like a student athlete in Division 3 school. Like you get the balance of both the academics and you have time for your uh, athletics apart from your academic schedule. Yeah. <laughs> have any such kind of to-do list or something that you want really wanted to do in college or in your four years so like how many have you accomplished in your like three years you are a senior now and how many are left or are you looking forward in the last year I think um I wrote it down because I have a journal I try to write in like once a week and just check in and see how much I've grown and I think that's that was the biggest thing. Like I wanted to not recognize myself by the end of my four years in college, because when I was in high school, I'd look at like a college senior, and it just they're completely different. And every single one I'd talk to, every person I talked to would say, "John, college changes them." And my goal is to trust myself to let my school change me and to let my school give me a space to grow up. And it did with all the highs and lows, like. Now I look back at myself when I first started college, I'm just like, I grew up significantly from the person who came in here. And at the end of this year, I feel confident going into to pursue my future studies and the next level of school. And like, I, I wouldn't have done it without Mona Pitzer. So like, you know, you took a double major in neuroscience and uh, theater. So uh, both are very opposite to each other. So uh, why such a combination and how did you uh, arrive to such a uh, such two different, different subjects and like how did you manage uh, both? Yeah, it was definitely hard to do both. Like right now I'm doing two thesis projects right now, so I'm going, my life's pretty crazy. But, you know, I signed up for that and I picked, that's probably why I wanted a liberal arts school more than any anything else, and why I came to Pomona and Claremont. Like, they're so different. They don't really have anything in common. But surprisingly, as I go through the years looking at these subjects, they have so much more in common than we could think of. Um, there's a lot of movement, and there's a lot of cognition and emotion within the theater world that you that neuroscience looks at without directly looking at it and the beauty of it all is um it forces me to be both creative and it forces me both um analytical i get to work both sides of my brain and i feel like having both of them at a school such as claremont it makes it possible to have multiple interests so i feel weird for being it kind of feels like high school musical being like troy bolton like kind of feels like I don't have to choose between basketball and singing like I can have swimming I can have neuroscience I can have theater I can also have time to be with my friends and just chill out and I have time to just travel and like our schools make it possible to do whatever we want to do and if we're passionate about it it will make itself work no matter how hard it is that's a gr that's a crazy combination okay so, like, what's what's your best moment uh, in the past three years in your college? Um, like, it's kind of crazy. It's a lot of, like, small moments. And, like, I think I, I have two. I think just so we can give one for swimming and one for normal academics. Um, yeah, you can. 
Yeah, I think for swimming, I think my favorite moment would be it's a combination of things from my junior year of swimming. It was a swim meet against UC San Diego and then that Sky or Conference Championship on our on the third night when I swam the 100 fly um, for UC San Diego. Um, that was a big meet for me because months before I was injured, I had a procedure done in my back from an injury and I was out of the water for like six months, seven months. I didn't touch the water from July to end of December and my first practice back was what we have called winter training where we come back during winter break a couple weeks early. So all we do is swim. We have a long course meter pool too. So we switch it up from the normal short course yards to get extra, like to really just jump in and get in shape. And when that happened, I was so out of shape. I could barely do a hundred free, like without dying. And then a couple weeks later when UC San Diego came, that was my second meet back ever. Like I was totally nervous. I was out of shape and I had a lot of my, a lot of alumni and what my seniors, and then I have a, a lot of people who I knew texted me that morning for UC San Diego saying, good luck. It's time. And because of all that, I got up on the block and that was the probably my first race ever in my career where I stopped focusing on what everyone else is doing. I didn't care anymore. I didn't get the same nerves of like, oh my, oh my God, I'm racing this person. It was the first time I got up on the blocks just being like, you know what, I'm going to race because I purely enjoy this. And I swam faster than I did when I was in shape. And this is only with like three weeks of training under my belt. And to do that, being at that meet, the only swimmer to win an event against a D1 school from a D3 college, like, that felt pretty huge. Like, I felt, like, super proud of myself. Like, I did something that was a pretty big deal for our school, and then to be Athlete of the Week on top of it. Like, having all of that happen purely because my mindset of swimming changed because I missed it so much, it changed to stop caring about the pressure of other people and the expectations. It was the first meet where I finally understood I'm competing because I love to compete. And there's something about me that hates losing. Like, I absolutely hate losing. I just want to keep getting faster. And that was a meet that kind of tied it together, which got to Sky X and that memory, because that 100 fly was the first time I broke a significant time barrier. I've been bashing my head on the wall for three years for. And I got closer and closer, but I never broke it until that meet in February. And I remember my friends knew how much how important it was for me to break that time barrier. And I loved it. And then academics, mm. yeah, and academics is the same thing. I did a research conference during my time um, when I was injured. I had more time to focus on lab. So I was, I got into my first research conference and being there realizing with, I was so many other people from all these schools in California talking about science. It was a place for me to nerd out and talk about my research in the brain. And I sp specify with alcohol liver disorder. And I was able to nerd up about that with people who wanted to listen. And I think that those were those key moments were highlights of my college career because there were so many moments like that. College, it's like, it's never like one big moment you'll remember. It's all the small things. Like I'll remember also, like, I'll remember so many of the hangouts with my friends where we just, like, watch TV and just talk and the meaningless conversations. You you still remember them because it's, like, they mean that much to you. And, and our school is, like, every day because of COVID and not being on campus, I can't help but think <laughs> about our school's dining halls and the beautiful buildings and the wonderful faculty and staff and the professors. Like, I love my advisors and... I plan to get coffee with them when the pandemic is getting better. So, yeah, it's just in general, well, like, it's just small moments. That's great. So, like, what's your future plan right now? And what what, what do you wish to do ahead uh, after graduating from your college? Um, my plans is to continue neuroscience. Um, I'm applying for different schools. 
after here so I can keep pursuing my research degree and so I can keep investing in the world of alcohol use disorder. Um, I've been doing this research for three years now, almost four. I started my, at the end of my freshman year and I fell in love with the lab. So next year I plan to take a gap year before I continue school and I'm going to be working in the lab full time, which is great for me because now I can talk about science all day and not go to class for a year, which is kind of cool. And then the following year, I hope to be ready, ready to be in the classroom again. Oh, 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 oh,